I will. Fuck me. Hello, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm doing a, a little ride out here in late September 2024 and to do a little video about some things I've been thinking about ever since the uh, release of the uh, GS 1300. And my thoughts were at the time, I'm sure you've seen them in the other videos, if you haven't then please have a look. But the, uh, when the GS, GSA 1300 came out, the adventure, and how BMW broke between, uh, uh, the, the, between the, the standard 1300 with a, 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 a different design, made me think, well, well, when the 1400 comes out, will that be different yet again? Are they going to come out with a standard 1400 GS and then a, a GS uh, Adventure and the standard is a GS 1400M? So uh, I started thinking, well, what if uh, BMW really uh, started uh, being quite creative? Maybe do a, a huge leap forward on the 1400 that will leave the uh, competition way behind. I started thinking, with a sort of a cup of tea, and thinking, well, what, what would my wish list be for a BMW R1400 GS Adventure or M? You know, would BMW, have they got something in the uh, their skunk works, uh, working on something that's just gonna uh, knock everybody just sideways and go, brilliant, genius. So yeah, so uh, I made a note of a few things that I was thinking, uh, ah, well, fuck me, those, those peasants, peasants, pheasants, those pheasants are going to kill me one day. Well, I told you, I probably mentioned in the other videos, that I was headbutted by a pheasant with this helmet and gave me a headache for two days and smashed the visor. So I'm now very wary of pheasants. They seem to be the stupidest thing on the planet. But anyway, back to the topic. So yeah, I started listing things that uh, I thought, oh, yeah. If, what if these, this was on the list? And I'm wondering if uh, after you watch this video, whether you, you know, have some ideas of your own. So please uh, feel free to uh, stick them down in the comments there. Let your mind just wander beyond the constraints of what we know as motorcycles and just think, well, there's something adventurous. I mean, who would have thought, I don't know, five years ago, ten years ago, uh, probably even longer with a Honda DCT, you know, automatic motorcycles, you know, not beyond scooters, you know, would be here, um, and probably the future, you know. So it makes me think, well, okay, well, what could be in the future? You know, what could be outlandish? I'm going to go with them, with uh, through them, with uh, in a particular order. My favourite ones first. First and second, probably, and uh, the rest is in no particular order. So, number one on my wish list is two-wheel drive. Yeah, why can we have a two-wheel drive bike? Now you might be thinking, oh, we're going to need some Heath Robinson contraption to get the drive shaft to the forward, and it needs to have a universal joint of oh, blah 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 blah. No, 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 no. The answer is here already. It's an electric front wheel. Why can't we have an electric front wheel on the bikes? Then hooked in with all the smart technologies and the computer there. I mean, it could be uh, pulling out of bends, uh, helping with off-roading, pulling out of ruts and whatever. I mean, just think, you know, the, 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 the technology that the, uh, the boffins of BMW could come up with how the front electric wheel behaves in various road conditions. So yeah, that got me thinking, thinking, yeah, absolutely. So that's, you know, number one. Number two, 
is a, which is connected to number one really, maybe that's a cheat, is um, a reverse. Well now that we have the electric front wheel, we can have a reverse quite easily. Just flick a switch and either, I don't know, have a little lever you push or twist the throttle, I don't know how, and it'll slowly pick up speed and uh, push you back at whatever it is, half a mile an hour, whatever it is, to help you uh, uh, push the bike back. Or even smarter, if the uh, buffins do it right, it's just a reverse assist. So as you push with your feet, it helps you. So it doesn't have to push the bike itself, but certainly help you. So if you're on an incline parked up somewhere and you think, oh, you know, damn it, I should have... Uh, Got reverse this into the sparking space and now you're stuck. Well, there's no worry with a reverse assist that you'll uh, just uh, push back with your feet and the front wheel will help you to push back. See? I, I, I think I've got something here. So that's one, one and A, two, let's say two. So, my third idea is a vertical stabilization system. And I'm thinking of things like, you know, Segway, you know, but uh, thinking more of uh, the gyroscopes could be put into big bikes like this, heavy bikes, you know, gold wings on the like, not just adventure bikes. Anything that's big and heavy. I mean, for example, on this GS, whenever I come up to a light and I'm braking, and if I'm fully loaded with the, you know, panniers and a pillion, if I'm slightly off centre, I sometimes feel the bike's going to go that way as I'm braking. So I'm thinking, well, what if there was a, a stabilisation gyroscope built into? I don't know where, top of the end, top of the bike, bottom of the bike. I'll leave that to the, uh, the smart people to work that out. Where, as you're braking, you know, it, it kicks into action. I'm not talking about the, you know, you, you got to fight it to keep the, to lean the bike or anything, but enough for it to counteract this last few seconds of leaning, the last half mile or two, an hour. Now this might sound, you know, it's absolutely crazy, but there is a company out there who have already done this. They have a, an encased uh, two-wheeler, for those who know the, uh, the Carver, it's that kind of vehicle. Uh, the company is called Lit, L-I-T, Motors. Check them out, check their website out, check out their little uh, two-wheeler. And that stays upright. And the video of them trying to drag it over with a car, and it won't go over. So the technology is already there to keep a, uh, a vehicle upright. There you go. I think that would be great. So even when you're stationary and you lift the bike up, it can actually help it just stay upright while you're still stationary, you know, faffing about. Yeah, maybe when you pull up at lights, and you're, you're chatting with your mates or whatever, the bike just helps to keep itself a bit more steady. I mean, if you pushed it, it'll, it'll probably go over. But if you're not paying attention and you slightly start going, it'll actually just keep it back. It doesn't have to be much. Maybe about you know, three degrees either side, it'll right itself. If you put it beyond, push it beyond three degrees, and it, it'll go. So yeah, so that's my third option. Some stabilization. stabilization options just as an a, a totally aside a message just came up on my uh, TFT telling me that my key fob is out of range I've had this happen to me before and I panicked and I went oh no I do have it what's it talking about oh is it the battery that battery must be going and it's not the battery all I found out to be which is as I am today 
as I'm wearing my uh, case heated jacket and uh, whenever I have that on and it's powered on it seems to interrupt it's like a Faraday cage I can imagine I don't know it must be shielding the signal from the key which is in my own pocket here and the bike not all the time but uh, but sometimes the bike just comes up says I can't I can't see the key interesting so I just done it and I was thinking ah okay yes now I've got my uh, heated jacket on I suppose the test will be is next time I do this, or maybe when I'm out here, is I'll put the uh, key in the uh, little compartment here, away from the jacket, just to see what happens. See if it moans again. So yeah, so a quick recap. One, electric front wheel. Two, use the uh, front wheel for, as a reverse. And three, some gyro technology in there just to keep the bike upright when you're braking or when you stood still just to stop it toppling over because the, t the one time maybe even the two times I've actually had to lay this bike on its side is when I was braking you know a bit hard and I was slightly off I stopped but the bike was just at enough angle that I couldn't hold it so I just had to quickly you know lay it down Had there been something kicking in in that last few seconds or two, just to either hold it where it is and allow me to push it back up or bring it back up itself, I'll, you know, that's up to the, uh, the scientists to work out. I need to uh, adjust the, uh, the Insta 360. It's gone a bit limp on me. Yeah, why have you gone a bit limp? Let's, uh, let's give everything a wipe. To be sure, to be sure. Yeah, I better not use that one again. I'm out getting the last bit of the uh, summer. Yeah, so while I'm talking about the uh, GS1400 wish list, 
Um, I'm also heading out to see some uh, of the uh, white horses uh, on the hillsides uh, here in Wiltshire. I'm planning on visiting a couple. One is just beyond uh, Marlborough, I think Alton Barnes, south of Marlborough, in Wiltshire. And another one is just north of Devizes, which is just a bit further along. I've unplugged my case jacket, so hopefully uh, I should not be getting that uh, key for missing message. Hasn't showed up as yet. Just coming up to Marlborough. Just in case you're wondering how is the uh, my R1200C doing. Uh, yes, she's fine. Ambrosia is uh, doing uh, okay. Well, that's the last video, or video four last, I put her through MOT. I'm just needing to sort out the road tax when I'm umming and eyeing, is it worth it doing it? This side of winter. I think according to YouTube, I'm probably the only active R1200C channel out there. I don't know if you guys have found any other one that's, you know, actively putting videos of the cruiser uh, up. Private uh, college, girls' college, I think. I'm not sure. Well, it's a girls' college. It's a private college here in Marlborough. School, college, college. It says. Okay. Very nice. Marlborough College. Okay, I have uh, I've arrived at uh, Lockbridge Dean, and uh, this field, which has the sarse and rocks in it, uh, has been bought by the National Trust, I believe. And there's another field, the other side of the A4, called Piggle Dean Field, which has more rocks in it. Uh, so I thought I'll stop and have a stretch of her legs and a quick uh, walk around in it. Well, I mentioned uh, my uh, other idea for the uh, GS uh, 1400, so uh, I will take you with me right now. Uh, which one do I take? Do I take the uh, Action 4? Because it's quicker to release, isn't it? Yeah. So the theory goes... Yeah, here we go. Okay, switch the bike off. National Trust, Lockridge Dean. Here's one. All right, so what's my uh, fourth, fifth uh, idea for uh, the GS1400? 
Well, now we're getting into the, uh, the itty bitty bits. Well, one is an adjustable um, height uh, pillion grab bars. Because I don't know about you, I've had short people and tall people on backs of bikes. And uh, the grab bars are always the same. So the short people are probably fine. Well, the taller people are hunched, trying to you know, find it to, to grab it. So adjustable. It doesn't have to be, you know, 15 settings, just two, high and low. I think that would be a, a nice little feature. And another one would be... And again, it's probably not solely BMW, but they could, they could do introduce it into their panniers or their top box. And that's a, a refrigerated option. So you can plug it in and uh, it just keeps uh, things chilled. Which could be nice for sandwiches and drinks. Now, it doesn't have to be the top box itself. I mean, the top box itself could have just a little bit of a, a point, electrical point. But the actual chilling can be done with a an insert, like we have at the moment with the insert bags that you can buy for the panniers in order to uh, lift them out and leave the panniers on the bike. It could be a, a chiller version of that. Or a heater version. Hey, I might get into Uber Eats. Just imagine a heated pannier to put the uh, the food in. Yeah, not for me, but that's an idea. So I'm just going to change the battery on the, this and uh, the Action 4 here, and uh, I'll be back with you. Should be at some point the white horse becoming visible to my back right. See if I can spot it with the uh, 360. The other ones won't be long now when I. Yeah, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The Alton Barnes white horse. When I was younger, much younger, I used to paraglide off these hills at the back. See, all those in your views who are paragliders, hang gliders, ex paragliders, hang gliders, appreciate uh, nice hills like this. So now we're heading off to the uh, second white horse. Um, I've forgotten its name. It is called. It is called something or other. Anyway, I'll come to it. Some, I'll look it up when I get there. It's just north of uh, Devizes in Wiltshire. So what's the other? Uh, Ideas I have come up with for the GS1400. No oh, bugging me, guys. Fuck off. So, think of the windshield. Now we've got um, electric windshields. So how about the windshield automatically adjusts height according to speed? 
Yeah, so you know, you go faster you go, the, the more wind there is, the further it goes. And this could be just an option on the menu. You know, active windshield. There you go, patent that. And of course, uh, the safety element will have to be taken into account with that. Do you want this thing going up and down in front of you? Do you want it doing it in the rain? Or not doing it in the rain? Do you want it rain sensitive? There you go, there's another one, I just thought of that. Shield goes up if there's rain. So a rain sensor, activated windshield. Ah, these are, these are, I should uh, really start patenting these. I'm a millionaire, this time next year we'll be millionaires. Yeah. So yeah, what else? With all this electrification going on on the bikes, how about a power-assisted center stand? I think some bikes already have it. Uh, some Harleys do, maybe an Indian or something like that. But I'm talking about maybe a more functional one, where it. Uh, You can hit a, hit a button and it'll stabilize the bike and you, and you can get off. And then when you're off, you can press a button and it'll pull itself up onto the stand or push itself up. It doesn't have to be the same mechanism with a swing. It could actually just pull itself up as normal. Close, closed. Duh. So you can just about maybe make it out. I'll put some pictures of Tintin at home, but you can just about make it out up there. We're going to make it all the way up there, up that tree line, and park up at the top and walk to it. Oh, best plans and all that. I'll put some pictures on there which one it is. <laughs> but I will also tell you what it's called. It is called... It is called... It is called... Sexy there. Roundway White Horse. The Roundway White Horse. Yeah, it's got a coffee and a tea. It's a Planks Farm Shop. I don't know if it's open. It closes at five, it says open. Well, we're four o'clock. Oh, we just make it. Go, go, go. 13 minutes. I'm going to have to stop and shut up Mr. BMW. He's having a, a bit of a crisis with me not going the other way. Oh, the 360 battery is gone. I need to buy a spare one. I do need to buy a spare one. Because the X3s with batteries don't fit the X4. So I've sold all those on eBay with the X3. This farm shop is open. Otherwise, it will have been a, a not so successful ride out. Well, not successful in the places I wanted to go, but quite successful in delivering my crazy wish list. I mentioned earlier, you guys have been inspired by my wackiness, and you think that is an idea. Stick it in the comments. And for everybody who hasn't uh, subscribed, if you like what I'm doing, yeah, please subscribe if you feel like it. Dingle that. Uh, 
bell, to get alerts for my next post. Take it away. Let's just have a look down there. Okay, well that was a nice little pit stop, coffee and a little snack. It was a bit uh, intimate for me to uh, start yapping at a camera at a table, so uh, I skipped uh, going through the, uh, the last couple of uh, GS1400 wishlist items. So I'll just cover them now. Basically, the last ones are, bear in mind that the, uh, the 1300 GS Adventure has that new uh, key fob tank with a couple of clips on either side of it here to uh, you know, attach bags and things. I'm just wondering whether they could come up with a, an attachment that you can add to it that um, allows you to lock in a helmet or two, one either, one either side. So rather than having to put your helmet inside the top box, what if there's two of you, you know, where, where do you put the second helmet? Now, okay, um, some, some, I think some top boxes might take two helmets, but some panniers might do, whatever. But I'm thinking it's an opportunity to be able to have some clips that you just fix to the side of the tank. And then when you uh, park up and you want to be helmet free, is that you uh, full face helmet just put it through and it's some sort of a clip that clips through the chin and then clips back up into the tank now it could be a, a lock on it a key like you lock it and it just holds the helmets to the tank now I'm sure some people might try and ride the bike like that with a helmet attached to the bike but I wouldn't recommend it but if it's done right and the helmet's truly fixed to the sides of the tank really solid then maybe you could ride with two helmets strapped to the side of the tank. Don't know why you'd want to do that, but uh, that's a possibility. So yeah, that's uh, an idea of storing a helmet after you've parked up to the sides of the tank. Now those clips, mean maybe not the tank, but if, uh, if you can actually buy them and somehow drill and attach them to the uh, sides of the top box, for example, so you could actually then put them onto the uh, sides of your top box when you've parked up. And they're locked from inside the top box. So that could be a, an idea. I'm getting visions of uh, me engaging some 3D designer and uh, sending my design to some 3D uh, printing farm. Make these quick! I'm going to stick a ball on eBay. But yeah, so you know, they're having the post a couple. You drill little holes into your uh, top box either side, fixed from the inside, locked from the inside. So you put the helmet on on the outside, flap the thing over through the chin, lock it to the top, and lock it from the key on the inside. It's not going anywhere. And when you're not in use, you just got these little extra little brackets that protrude from the side of your tank, uh, side of your top box. So yeah, well, there's another one, another idea, it's just some way of uh, attaching the uh, your helmets when you park up. The other idea for a GS is uh, whether you can have not just heated seats, but could you have cooling seats? The technology exists, and I know BMW probably has it in the cars. Why not put it into the bikes? Why don't you have a seat that actually chills your ass in hot summer days? 
So yeah, so not just heating seats but cooling seats. Rider and pillion. So yeah, that's uh, I'm trying to think. Is there any more? I've got a feeling there's one more to have in my head. Right, okay, it's just come to me, the last one. I knew there was one more on my list. And that is the uh, handlebar dampeners. Just to take more of that uh, road uh, feedback away. I know some people love it. And uh, I just wonder if it could be you know, dampened a bit. So we could put some handlebar risers. It could be invented to uh, have some dampeners in there. Now, I've, since thinking of this, I, I looked online and Sure enough, uh, Wanderlich do uh, do some handlebar risers which have a core in the middle that go around the bars that are somehow shock absorbing. So maybe you know, someone's already come up with it. How effective they are, I don't know. You know I don't know if anybody has bought any of those Wanderlich, you know, handlebar uh, risers with a dampener in them. You know, by all means, let me know in the comments. I want to throw away one is, can we have two proper key fobs, please? Not just one. But you know you're going to lose it one day. It's going to happen. Well, that's 250 quid that BMW wants, at least, I should imagine. So two, please. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, coming to the, the end of the... Uh, my ride here and uh, so I hope you hope you liked it I hope you like this little video and maybe giving you some food for thought if it was a, a blank sheet of paper what would you wish this be for the next bike from the manufacturers any manufacturers I'm going with BMW and the GS but it could be any next release the Versus Trans Alp whatever you know if that manufacturer could think outside the box just to make something that uh, just that bike just becomes renowned for it oh that's the one with the with the doodah you know and uh, becomes the uh, the trendsetter that all the subsequent manufacturers start following so I wonder what that could be so uh, you know by all means stick it in the comments uh, it could be interesting what uh, wacky things might come up and you never know one day, some manufacturer might put it in and you'll say, I was there, I thought of it first. So by all means, if you like the channel, subscribe. And if you uh, like uh, this video, you know, click that, click that like button. And uh, if you want to be alerted to any subsequent uh, videos that I might paste, uh, post, paste, and uh, so uh, tinkle that bell, and I uh, hope, on, uh, so on the end of this, I am going to uh, uh, sign off, and uh, wish you all to drive safely, squeeze in the last few days of sunshine for 2024, before it's all over, and uh, I will catch you all on the next one. Drive safe. Bye for now.